Why hello there ladies and gentlemen Welcome back to the post game Yo what the heck I was just messing around not even doing my real intro But now I gotta continue because the title screen has an actual theme to it Which it didn't have during the main game I guess this is like a post game thing It's a little weird though that you still hear all these like sound effects of people talking and like squeaky shoes in the background I'm not sure that I like that but today we are of course beginning the post game so if you guys are excited don't forget to smash that like button because there is still plenty of content way more than I expected there to be in this game considering the last few generations haven't really had much of a post game at least Pokemon Sword and Shield but I'm very excited for you guys to see what we've got here in the Paldea region so without further ado let's get into it And we're back in the dorm room, and of course it's night time. Every time I'm gonna record, it's night. Ding dong ding! Better not be a prank. Calling students to the director's office. Master Orange, Nimona, Master Arvin, and Miss Penny. Director Clavel would like to see you in his office. Uh-oh. I sure hope we're not in trouble. <laughs> I'm gonna guess he's just gonna commend us for the long journey that we've been on. Though I feel like we should probably rest up and just do this the next day, but in this game, they don't let you just sleep things on. Like back in Legends Arceus, I really wish that was something they included. That you could just sleep at your bed and change the time of day, but this is fine. The hero's finally here! Would you care to join us, Master Orange? Why, of course. We're in for an earful, aren't we? Guess we'll find out soon enough. No need for concern, you two. I'm not angry in the slightest. I merely called you all here to discuss your fine achievements in this year's treasure hunt. You shut down the professor's time machine and thus prevented the ancient Pokemon from running rampant across Paldea. Your actions were truly outstanding in every regard, and I couldn't be prouder of you all. Finally, someone's proud of me, though your decision to enter a strictly off-limits area was admittedly regrettable. Aw, oh, come on, I'm sure you can just sweep that under the rug, right, Clavel? Heh, <laughs> you got us there. No, don't admit to it, Nimona. As long as we don't admit to the crime, we'll be fine. Since this was necessary to protect Paldea and its precious ecosystems, I am willing to overlook that particular point. Huh, <sighs> so we're not getting raked over the coals after all. Not sure what that means, but uh, before I forget, Master Orange, there's something I'd like you to have. Each of your friends has received one already, so this one's for you. A Master Ball! I was wondering when we were gonna get this. I mean, I could have sworn it was from Professor Sada or Turo since they literally used one in battle, but finally we have our very own Master Ball, and I know the perfect Pokemon we can use it on later in the episode. Oh, and about the Hall of Fame badge I gave you a short while ago, that gift is one we bestow only upon students who achieve truly remarkable feats. I expect you to honor what that badge represents by striving always to serve as a model for your fellow students. Everything comes back to school, doesn't it? I guess I'll try. As much as I wish I could take off my uniform, well, I suppose you must be rather worn out from your recent adventures. Yeah, could definitely use some rest. And Master Arvin, I was so sorry to hear about the professor. You have my deepest condolences. Uh, well, yeah, it was pretty rough when I found out my mom died. But weirdly enough, my head actually feels pretty clear now, for the first time in ages. In the Great Crater, I got to learn a bit about my mom's research and what she was trying to achieve down there. I guess if you're building something as mind-blowing as a time machine, that takes priority over showering your son with attention, huh? Nah, dude, come on. You don't gotta make excuses for your crappy parents. I mean, if it helps you cope, then I guess, but still, they could have still made some time for you. All I know is I'm done feeling like some lost little kid. Done! Time to say goodbye and move on. I'm gonna enjoy every last day till graduation with my buds here, and I'm a boss diff, of course. Well said, Master Arvin. You truly are your mother's son. Of course, I must remind you that you've nowhere near enough credits to graduate. Oh, dang. You'll need to study frantically to catch up, but I have every expectation of your success. What? Oh, man. Let us not forget the other good news. Our academy has a new champion! 
Though we sadly cannot make your valiant deeds in the Great Crater known to the public, your new champion rank at least should be celebrated throughout the whole school. What does that mean? I know how we should celebrate! We should hold a Pokemon Battle Contest! Oh, Nimona, always itching to get back into the fight, huh? Seriously? Could we not? Classic Nimona. A battle contest, you say? While your own vested interests in such a venture are more than apparent, Miss Nimona, I think it's a fine idea. But please understand that a large-scale event will be quite beyond us. We've many other school activities to keep an eye on, after all. Oh yeah, like what? Pardon my intrusion. I couldn't help but over here, let me guess. Gita? Oh yeah. I'd recognize that Sonic hair from a mile away. The Pokemon League will, of course, happily lend a hand in organizing this contest. La Primera? Well, well, the most kind offer, Chairwoman. Dang, they don't even call her champion anymore. I don't even know if they used to call her champion, actually, but... I do everything in my power to nurture young and up-and-coming talent. Though, that's not to say only the youth have promise when it comes to Pokemon battles. A former gym leader, the developer of the Pokedex app, this academy clearly counts many skilled trainers of Pokemon among its staff. As such, my suggestion is as follows. Students and staff should compete for the title of strongest trainer at the academy! Whoa! We get to battle the teachers! You compete too, right, Primera? Yes, I've been itching for my revenge against Gita since technically the first time we battled, I did fail the challenge of not using healing items. Is that even allowed? The chairwoman's not part of the academy, right? Actually, I think she's the chairwoman of the school board as well as the Pokemon League. Oh yeah, Penny would know considering she hacked into the system. For real? I mean, I knew she was on another level, but wow. Thank you for the invitation, Champion Nimona. I would gladly take up your kind offer to compete alongside you all, but... I'm afraid my schedule is already packed tight with work that I simply must attend to. No, come on! Can't you free up time somehow? Well, I suppose I might be able to participate if Champion Orange would agree to lend me a hand with my work. Ooh, our first post-game side quest? Where should we start? Excellent answer. Much obliged. To get straight to it, I would like you to go out and inspect Paldea's various gyms in my stead. Are they fulfilling their duties as beacons of strength and inspiration for all those aiming to achieve champion rank? Or has their brilliance started to fade? To find this out, I ask that you bring your full might as champion to bear against each of the gym leaders and test their prowess in battle. AKA Gym Leader Rematches! Let's go! I do not expect you'll find any cracks in their armor, but, well, consider it a formality. This will also provide the perfect stage for your first appearance as new champion. Since all the gym leaders will still be expecting me to carry out the inspection, I imagine they'll have mustered their full strength. I dare say they might be more of a challenge than when you faced them before. Oh, I sure hope so. You gonna have all-out battles with the gym leaders? Man, I'm jealous! Now then, on to another crucial matter. What more could you possibly have for us? I'd like to discuss with Penny here how to patch the weakness in our system. Yikes. Um... But there's a bunch of anime I've missed that I was just gonna binge! So anime exists in the Pokemon world too? That's cool. Thank you in advance for your willing and eager cooperation, bruh. She really gave her the snake eyes. I, I mean, I'll do it. I'll help. Yeah, let me help. Excellent. We'll leave you all to it then. Come now, Penny. Oh my god. The anime's gonna have to wait. This is awesome, Orange! Show this inspection thing who's boss so that La Primera can join our tournament, okay? And enjoy taking another swing at the gym gauntlet while you're at it. I'll take care of filling out the forms and other administrative stuff so the ball gets rolling on the tournament in the meantime. I say, it's wonderful to see you all showing such initiative. You each have a critical role to play. Penny assisting the league, our new champion inspecting gyms, Nimona arranging the event, and Arvid? Oh, come on! How are you just gonna leave Arvid out like that? Poor guy. Guess my role's so obvious it goes without saying. Yeah, that's definitely what happened there, buddy. <laughs> of course he'll be in charge of the sandwich making squad. And suddenly everyone's gone, even Clavel, what the heck? Where did this man go? Also, I'm still curious about all these fossils on his wall. We can't even inspect them. 
Like, I really want to know, what kind of footprint is that? Anyway, back outside the academy, we've got a couple of options now. As Gita mentioned, we can do the Gym Leader rematches, but there's also the Hidden Legendaries, four of them to be exact, that we can go catch. So I want to ask you guys in the comments to vote for what you want to see up first, the Gym Leader rematches or the Legendary Hunt. And depending on what gets the most votes is what we'll take on first. But in today's episode, I've got something special planned that I want to go catch myself all the past Paradox Pokemon and try to solve the mystery of them. So we're back at the Great Crater of Paldea and we're going to head all the way back to the bottom or I guess just to Area Zero so we can start catching ourselves these Paradoxes and a special Legendary. I think we can teleport to all the different research stations but we might as well start out from the very top, and I'm pretty sure now we should be able to also ride on Koraidon, which is going to make exploring this place so much faster and way more convenient, because I know there's a heck of a lot of items that I missed. Oh wait, this leads to this little container area, huh? Does that mean we can't take off from this platform like we did before? Ooh, maybe we can. Seems like a cutscene is loading. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Okay, I guess there isn't a cutscene. But yes, we can ride on Koraidon now in Area Zero. And what the frick? There's already a Slitherwing just chilling? Okay, I mean, I thought we had to go a little bit deeper to get ourselves some... I was about to say Ultra Beast, but uh, Paradox Pokemon. Jeez, I almost forgot the name of these. But uh, are we quite ready? Wait, what the heck? If you select Goraidon in the main menu, you can now have it change between its battle and ride form. Yo! So we can have Goraidon on our team, finally? Yes, let's change to battle form. But that means we gotta get rid of one of our other Pokemon. I mean, I guess I'd rather keep RuPaul since he's like our starter. As we add Cory onto the team! Yo, this is freaking crazy. Can we also nickname it? Oh, we totally can. Okay, so he still got the same attacks that uh, he had in the last battle, but now we can finally do this, dude! We got Cory in the house! For real this time! Still in that Pokeball, but if you guys remember, in the finale we saw there was actually another Goraidon down at the bottom of the crater, and I have a feeling it's still lurking down there somewhere. Yo, I want to get a better look at this, what are you called again? The something moth? Oh no, Slitherwing! Iron Moth is the future form. Yeah, it has like a freaking dinosaur tail, dude. I think all of the... Whoa, 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 what is going on? Oh my god, I just activated the enemy's ability because all the past Paradox Pokemon, so the ones in Scarlet, their ability triggers with uh, sunlight, whereas the ones in Pokemon Violet trigger with electric terrain. And it just so happens that Goraidon and Miraidon, their ability is to activate sunlight or electric terrain when they enter battle, so... Yeah, they're basically like the masters of the past and future Pokemon. And I totally knocked out that Slitherwing on accident. Oh wait, what the heck? Oh, I guess when we ride Goraidon, it automatically goes back into this? Wait, does that mean that if we get off, it'll be back in our party? Nope, looks like we gotta manually change form again. Okay, well that's a little bit weird that we have to keep like, change his form each time we want to use it in battle. Well, it's not weird, it's just a little bit annoying going through the extra menus. Now, I'm actually trying to catch myself a Slitherwing, so let's actually grab Phoebe back out of the PC, since she's got Nuzzle. And we'll give her a Lucky Egg too, just to get a little bit of extra XP, because I believe at level 60, she learns that double shock attack that you guys might have seen in the previous special bonus episode, where we battled Professor Turo in Violet version. Now, the levels are all back to normal on all the Pokemon that I used in that episode because I traded the save file over to Pokemon Violet. So here in Scarlet, they're still not trained up. Though I could use my EXP candies and like other items that I have to make them a little bit stronger. I think I'm going to wait until we actually go to the Gym Leader rematches because I feel like I can probably train them up without having to use up my candies. Like if I just go auto battle some Pokemon down here in the crater. I don't know why I keep thinking these are Ultra Beasts, but they're definitely not, so we can just use a regular Netball, even though they have similar stats. Well, actually, I think Slitherwing, technically, its stats are lower than regular Volcarona, 
or maybe they're like around the same. I don't exactly remember, so I guess I'll show it on screen, but not every Paradox Pokemon actually gets an increase in stats. Mainly it's the ones that are based on like not evolved Pokemon. So for example, Jigglypuff, Miss Drevis, they get insane stat boost compared to the other. Bro, I keep wanting to say Ultra Beast, but I guess Paradox Pokemon. Oh no! Dude, Slitherwing just wrecked me. Oh, that's not good. But at least we did get it down to red HP and it's paralyzed. So we should have a bit of better luck catching it. I also don't know why I didn't just go for a quick ball right off the bat. Like that's always the tried and true strategy. And yet I always seem to forget. But like I was saying, these are not Ultra Beasts. So we should be able to use any kind of Pokeball and the Net Ball does work better on Bug types. So there we go. Got ourselves Slitherwing. Unfortunately, Phoebe's not gonna get any XP, even with the lucky egg, because she died. Oh, wait, what the heck? RuPaul's learning Wave Crash, yo! 120 power, but I guess it causes recoil damage? Yeah, it says it damages the user quite a lot. I don't know if I wanna get rid of Aqua Step for that. I mean, it's like 40 whole more power, but Aqua Step also raises our speed. I mean, I guess we'll try it out, and if I end up not liking it, then I can always remember aqua step thankfully in this game remembering moves is super easy but there it is slitherwing bug and fighting this mysterious pokemon has some similarities to a creature that an old book introduced a slitherwing i could have sworn it was gonna say it has some similarities to volcarona but no it's uh talking about actually just slitherwing see i don't know i'm a little confused about the whole scarlet and violet book thing I just want to check out Slitherwing outside of the ball because I really don't get the design of this paradox. Like, why is it fighting type? I don't get it, bro. I could have understood maybe bug and dragon considering the weird tail on it. What is your reaction to, to Slitherwing? Is that his name or the... That's his name, Slitherwing. No, like, is that the name you gave him? No, that's literally- look, this is the Pokedex! <laughs> this is the Pokedex! That's His name is Slitherwing! No way, is this a mod? This is not Volcarona. So Volcarona was trying to go back to being a caterpillar? Yep, and it can stand on two legs. That looks fake. <laughs> I think it's about time we explore a little more of this Area Zero. And I noticed off in the distance there's what looks like these satellite dishes. I don't know if they're actually what they actually are, but let's fly down because at least in that beginning area, all I saw were slither wings. So, oh God, we're descending down real quick, man. I was really hoping that once all of this was over, we would get one final upgrade for Kodai Don that would give you unlimited flying. I mean, technically we did get a final upgrade and that's its battle form. Like now we can use it in battle, but Oh no, Infinite Glide would be pretty cool too. Since like the intro cutscene, the very first time we ever saw Godai Dawn or Mirai Dawn, you can see it zooming across Paldea. It would have been pretty nice if you could actually do that in the game, but it was just false advertising, I suppose. Now there is another one of these satellite dishes a little bit further down, but no items to be found. Also, the only two paradoxes I found so far are Slitherwing and Screamtail. Whoa, what is that? Looked like some kind of portal to another dimension, but I guess it was just the reflection on this tree. Kind of weird. Oh, hey, finally, we got another new paradox. It's Sandy Shocks, everyone's favorite Magneton doppelganger. Well, let's test out Slitherwing in action, even though Sandy Shocks is no longer a steel type, so this superpower is actually neutral effective, which probably works out in our favor since I don't want to accidentally kill it. I mean, we do need to weaken it a little bit more, or it'd be nice to weaken it slightly more to make it easier to catch, but I'm pretty sure Lunge would kill it, so let's just go for our Ultra Ball, and maybe it'll work out, okay? I guess these, uh... Paradoxes don't have as crazy of a catch rate as I thought then. Huh. And at level 62, Samus is going to be learning Arm Cannon. Yo, finally! Armor Cannon, I mean, which is the signature move of Armor Rouge. 120 power, fire type version of close combat. As you can see there, it lowers your defense and special defense after using it. So literally the same as close combat, but it's a special move instead. 
which is pretty crazy. Sandy Shocks though is going to be electric and ground type. No record exists of this Pokemon being caught. Data is lacking, but the Pokemon's traits match up with a creature shown in an expedition journal. How is there no data on anyone catching it if people have been down here to the Great Crater? Am I really the first person since Sada to come down here? Is everyone just too scared that they're gonna die? I feel like that shouldn't prevent poachers from trying to come down here and catching them. I mean, in the real world, people do like extreme sports and other crazy careers like that definitely put their life at risk. You'd think more Pokemon researchers would be out here risking it all to catch rare Pokemon and like these are some of the rarest of them all like I've seen enough Pokemon movies to know there's some crazy ass people out there in the Pokemon world willing to take some risks to catch legendary so I feel like more people would have dared to venture down into Paldea's crater and catch these paradox beasts but apparently not at least according to Jock who I think wrote these Pokedex descriptions that doesn't make any sense though. The description in the Pokedex says no one's caught it. I literally just caught it. So wouldn't Jock be able to write up a little bit more about it, you know, now that we can like research it? Look at them walk, bro. Oh my god. That is like really disturbing, but at the same time, kind of hilarious. Why did the magnets become its legs? What the frick? I also just noticed Brute Bonnet chilling over here. So let's try to catch ourselves yet another paradox beast and this time it's gonna be a moongus everyone's favorite meme i'm not even gonna waste any time straight for the quick ball hopefully it works out i mean they haven't had the craziest catch rate so far but of course when i hype myself up as like it's been so easy catching these brute bonnet decides nope i'm gonna make your life difficult buddy all right fine let's try this again with slitherwing up first even though I'm still just gonna go straight for the quick ball, so it doesn't really matter what Pokemon I let off with. But I guess now if this one fails, then never mind, it's not gonna fail. Quick ball is the best, and we've got our fourth, maybe fifth paradox at this point, which is gonna be the Grass and Dark Brute Bonnet. It is possible the creature listed in a certain book could actually be this Pokemon. Bro, why are these descriptions so boring? Like seriously, I want to know more about like the actual Pokemon, you know, what is it? Why does it have a freaking dinosaur tail? Well, I was talking about Brute Bonnet, not Slitherwing, but it also has a weird tail thing. I mean, Brute Bonnet does, look at it! Also has like a dinosaur tail and legs by the way, in case you haven't noticed or don't remember, uh, regular Amoongus does not have legs like this one does. But I guess the more important question with Brute Bonnet is, if this thing really existed like thousands of years in the past, why the heck does the pattern on its head look like a Pokeball? Because obviously Pokeballs weren't invented until Hisui, I think, right? Maybe it's the other way around and Professor Laventon based the designs of the Pokeballs on Brute Bonnet, but he didn't know Brute Bonnet existed because it would have been 20,000 years in the past, like they would have had no way of knowing that Brute Bonnet ever existed, right? This just makes no sense, which is probably why they're called Paradox Pokemon, because the definition of Paradox, well, let me just look it up so I'm not making stuff up. A Paradox is a statement that seems to go against common sense, but may still be true. So it's kind of implying that these Paradox Pokemon might not actually be what they seem or they could be. I guess we just don't really know. Like there is that whole theory that the Paradox Pokemon were just new Pokemon created by the time machine or I guess the AI protocol and they might not have ever actually existed in the past because I have a hard time believing a Pokeball shaped mushroom actually existed way back in ancient times. One thing's for sure though, this Area Zero is freaking huge, dude! Kind of makes me wish there was a little bit more variety though, like everything looks kind of samey, like the very bright green sort of dreamlike feel and all the trees look the same. As I say that though, I found a cave which is definitely different. It's actually like a proper cave system. Yo! Finally! Yes! Why did you take so long to find, homie? Like, I don't understand, but we finally got Fluttermane, the ghost and fairy past form of 
Mistrevis. I don't know why I didn't just go for a quick ball, to be honest, because Group on it doesn't really have the best moves against it, or maybe it does. Okay, that actually wasn't too bad, getting it down to red health. You know what? Because we got you at the perfect health, I'm going to go for the patented Premier Ball. Or not. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that would work out. I'm pretty sure at this point a Nuzzle would kill it, but I want to at least try, because Nuzzle has very low power. Oh, you've got Dazzling Gleam. you got to be kidding me. That just one-shots, Phoebe. Wow. I've heard this thing has an insane special attack. I didn't realize it was like that. Okay, well, let's go Sandy Shocks, I guess. At this point, I don't even know why I'm not just running away and trying for the quick ball, but I kind of want to catch it in a heal ball. I feel like it fits it being pink, and it's also got pink at the tips of its little wings, and there we go. It actually works out. We got Flutter Main. And it is, in fact, a ghost and fairy. This Pokemon has characteristics similar to those of Fluttermane, a creature mentioned in a book. Wait, what do you mean it's similar to Fluttermane? It literally is Fluttermane, is it not? I am still so confused, man. But that is the final Paradox Pokemon here in Scarlet. Or is it? Because there's still one more. And I'm pretty sure it's somewhere around here. Because I remember reading that Roaring Moon can be found in a very specific cave. And I don't know about you guys, but this looks like a very specific cave. I mean, look at that giant waterfall over there. Also, the fact that we've got uh, Timid Min. Okay. That's uh, one of the better mints that you can get. Or I guess just in general, better Pokemon natures that you can get. But seriously, where the heck is my Roaring Moon? Like, look at these symbols on the ground, dude. This definitely looks like where we find it, but I'm still not seeing it. Maybe it's like closer to the waterfall or up above over there in the back. Um, not sure, but I mean, at least we found Flutter Main finally. So if you're also struggling to find one like I did, definitely recommend coming to this cave. Even though I'm not sure that I can explain how the heck I got here. It took a lot of exploring, but what the heck? Is this really a dead end? Oh no, we can go up a little bit higher. Okay, I was about to say, man. Like, this felt like it would have led to something. And it's another TM for Steel Beam. Noise. What the frick is this symbol, though? Yo. That's kind of crazy. I think that might be the same symbol that we found back as part of the professor's research. But I'm seriously confused why there's no Roaring Moon. Like, I'm pretty sure this is where it's supposed to spawn. Obviously, we're not seeing one here, so maybe we need to complete the Academy Ace Tournament. Or maybe it has to be nighttime. That would make sense. I mean, it's called Roaring Moon. But I don't even think there is a day and night cycle here in Area Zero, so I'm not really sure. I guess we'll come back a little bit later and see if we can get lucky. Much, much, much later. So we're back at Research Station 3, right before the entrance to the cave that leads down to the depths of Area Zero. And I have in fact confirmed that Roaring Moon is inside of that cave that we were just at, but I never really showed you guys how to get there. So from the left of the entrance to the cave, you're going to head through this kind of canyon, or I don't know what it's really called. I almost missed it actually, but right beside this tree, you'll notice this rock formation and behind them is where the entrance to the cave is. So it is in fact where you can find Roaring Moon or the past paradox form of Salamence, which is definitely my favorite, at least here in Pokemon Scarlet. If you're playing Pokemon Violet, you can also find Iron Valiant here, which is the future form of Gallade slash Gardevoir. It's kind of a weird one because sort of a combination of both Gallade and Gardevoir. You can already see a bunch of Flutter Main spawning in though, but there is in fact supposed to be Roaring Moons in here too. I don't know why none are appearing for me, but I guess we can just keep running around this area until we see one. I don't think Roaring Moon is supposed to be necessarily rare in here or anything, but for some reason it's just not appearing for me. So I guess we'll just keep running laps around this giant chamber and see if we can find one. Or maybe I'll just run into a dog trio. That would- wait, what the frick? Bro! No way, do you guys see that? There's a freaking shiny sable eye behind me. Oh my god. And I can't escape because of Dugtrio, bro. Get me out of here right freaking now before that sable eye disappears. Dude, it's trying to go inside of the rock. 
Please let me out of this battle. Please just one shot it. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, close combat. Got it. We're done here. Get me out. Also, I should probably save the game just in case we somehow fail to catch this thing. But what the frick, bro? We couldn't find Roaring Moon, but we find a shiny Sableye? What is this luck, man? This is my fourth shiny, I think, now in Pokemon Scarlet, at least. And I've got a couple more in Violet. So, like, our fifth or sixth shiny overall. And I just noticed Roaring Moon is also behind us now. Finally, it spawns in. But we failed to catch the Sableye, unfortunately. So, uh, I'm gonna have to come up with a different strategy here. Robustus the Sleepy. Oh, I love how it shows that title there because this shiny Satoddle that I found a bunch of episodes ago actually had a mark on it. I feel like it's pretty common for shiny Pokemon to have marks, at least on Twitter. Everyone that I see posting their own shinies, a lot of them end up having marks. So I don't know if that's a thing coded into the game where like shiny Pokemon are more likely to have a mark. But hey, we get a critical capture and have caught our shiny Sableye. The luck, baby! Our fourth shiny, and like I said, we got Roaring Moon back there too, but first, I want to come up with a nickname for little Sableye here, because it is a shiny, and this name might make absolutely no sense, but it's just what I came up with on the spot. Golden Eye, even though Sableye is the one that's golden, not its eyes. Oh wait, actually its eyes are also kind of golden, huh? Well, that name does fit then, but I just realized that Phoebe is dead. So catching this Rory Moon might be a little bit trickier than expected. Okay, hello. You're coming up to me, huh? Well, Rory Moon here, I believe, is a dark and dragon type, kind of taking the place of Hydreigon, which you can also see Zoelius, the middle evolution back there. But in Pokemon Violet, you can find the future form of Hydreigon. I think it's called... Iron Jugulus, and it's actually a Dark and Flying type, which is a little bit weird that they kind of swapped it with Salamence. Well, I don't have my usual team, but we do have Mac and Cheese with the Super Fang, which will always do half of their HP, unless we get one shot. That was definitely close. Oh, you've got to be kidding me, man. Really? Well, it seems weakening this Salamence is not going to be easy, so let's go out into Kiddo, who can at least tank Night Slash just barely. Jeez. Okay, it was a crit. I was about to say, man, why are you doing so much damage? And first impression is super effective, but not quite going to finish it. Oh, God. You're setting up the dragon dances now. This is not good. I guess the one thing we've got going for us is the fact that we're inside of a cave, so dust balls are a little bit better. And I think that's what we caught the Sableye in, so maybe it'll work with... Oh, come on, really? I thought that was it, man. I thought I spoke it into existence, but no. Now we get burnt to a crisp. Poor little grasshopper. I've never actually tried grasshoppers. I know that that's a thing people eat, or I guess it's like a little snack you can find in some places. And I'm not sure why I just went for salt cure, because I think that does more damage every turn. Well, at least it's not super effective, so I don't think it sh it'll kill it. Uh, it might be close. The salt has been cured. And the damage comes through, jeez, okay, that's a little bit too close for comfort there, dude. If this Dust Ball doesn't catch it, then we've totally failed with Roaring Moon. Of course, you break out on the first shake, not even a shake, what the heck, man? Which means this Salt Cure is gonna kill it, why, Roaring Moon? After so long, I spent trying to find you and you do me dirty like this, man? Seriously? Well, maybe Sableye can bring us the luck we need. Look at him. He runs so goofy. I love it. But I really need you to spawn another Roaring Moon in here. Like, it took us... I don't even know how long to get the first one, so... I'm not expecting another one to pop up anytime soon, but... I can only hope. A little longer than a few minutes later. Come on, bro. You can't be serious. Why is there no Roaring Moon spawning? <gasps> what? Wait, what? Are you serious? No, there's just absolutely no way. I don't even have like a shiny sandwich going or anything. How is this happening right now? There's just absolutely no way we got two little goldies? What is? Th what are the chances of that? Like, these are 100% full odds shiny Pokemon 
and we got two back-to-back, -back, and this time it's Grievered, one that I've actually been hoping for a long time. Like, I saw an outbreak of Grievers and did the whole shiny hunting thing. Never got one, but lo and behold, we've got our little shiny dog. Bro, what? This can't be happening. Okay, Roaring Moon's Cave is just blessed, apparently, in my game. Like, what? I'm gonna nickname you Gravy. I don't know why, that's just the name that came to my head. I guess it makes sense too. Griever, Graveyard, Graves, Gravy. Also, Gravy is kind of golden, like the substance you pour over mashed potatoes. And Gravy's gonna bring us the luck too. We got Roaring Moon. Oh my god, this is amazing, bro. Another shiny? You've got to be kidding me. Okay, I forgot you guys are freaking aggressive. Uh, other problem is that, uh, wait, what? They can randomly have booster energy? Excuse me? Huh. I was about to say, though, I ran out of quick balls, and I'm also out of dusk balls, so I'm not really sure how I'm gonna catch this roaring moon. I mean, gotta try, though. And I wonder if we catch it, do we get that booster energy? Because at the beginning of set, it used it up. So, is there any way you can actually get the booster energies from these wild Pokemon? I have no idea. I'm also a little scared because it Dragon Dance. It's probably going to knock us out, but at least we can get a... Oh, what? Yo! Wait, we just picked it up from Gravy! I didn't even know you could use Pickup that way. Like the move Thief, essentially. Okay. Well, it did go for a Dragon Dance earlier, which means it's going to be faster, but... Phoebe's actually pretty tanky, so at least we can get our nuzzle in and paralyze it. I'm thinking I might just stall it out and go for some timer balls, because I don't know what other kind of balls would really... I mean, I guess just regular old Ultra Ball might be good enough. Who knows, man? These Paradox Pokemon have been kind of 50-50. Like, sometimes they're super easy. Sometimes they're freaking the hardest thing in the world to catch for some reason. Okay, we have a bit of a problem on our hands because this Roaring Moon is not catching and I am running out of Pokemon. Let's try a patented Premier Ball. I don't know why switching up the Pokeball you use sometimes randomly gives you luck or I guess changes the odds, but not today, I guess. The Premier Ball definitely did not work out there. Oh boy. We're down to our final Pokemon, Robustus the Sleepy. Please give me the luck that we need. Another shiny, bro. This is crazy. I don't think it's been that many turns, though, necessarily to go for the timer ball, but it's all or nothing, dude. If we don't catch it right here, we're going to black out. <gasps> Are you serious? Robustus with the luck as we catch it in the timer ball. What is this episode, man? What is happening today? This is insane. Two shinies, and then Robustus comes in the third with the timer ball luck as finally we've got Dragon Dark Paradox Pokemon. It is possible that this is the creature listed as Roaring Moon in an expedition journal that still holds many mysteries. Bro, I'm still so confused. But I have learned that apparently in Pokemon Violet, the dex entries for the opposite version are a little bit more detailed. For some reason, I don't really get it still. But yeah, if you look up Roaring Moon, for example, in Pokemon Violet, According to an article in a dubious magazine, this Pokemon has some connection to a phenomenon that occurs in a certain region, which I'm guessing refers to Mega Evolution. After all, Roaring Moon does look a lot like Mega Salamence with a giant croissant shape on its back. Well, it's actually supposed to be a crescent moon, of course, which is why it's called Roaring Moon, but you know. I'm still not fully convinced they actually existed back in ancient times, but... At least I'm understanding a little bit more why their dex entries are so vague. Anyway, I just noticed that Gravy... Wait, I thought you picked up a booster energy. But I guess because we caught Roaring Moon, it keeps the booster energy that it had on it already. Whereas the one that Gravy stole from it is gone. Or is it because Gravy fainted in the battle? I really wonder if maybe we could have somehow gotten two booster energies out of this. I mean, regardless, getting one booster energy is awesome enough. Yeah, we finally got all of the past paradoxes. You can see the full lineup here, except for Great Tusk, which is, of course, the past form of Dawnfan we caught a very long time ago as a Titan Pokemon. But there's the rest of them for at least here, Pokemon Scarlet. And I'll probably do a special episode catching the ones in Violet sometime in the future. 
or just a video about all the Paradox Pokemon in general, once I figure out a little bit more about their dex entries and what exactly everything means. But for now, let's head out of this cave, which is apparently blessed in my game. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if as we're walking out, we end up finding another shiny, bro. Like, this is insane. How did we get two shinies in there back to back? But now it's time to wrap things up by heading back to Research Station 4 at the very bottom of the Great Crater, aka the Zero Lab. Well, I guess the Zero Lab is a little bit further down, but there's one more Pokemon that we can get here, and it is perhaps the most special of all the Paradoxes. There's also a whole bunch of items all around Area Zero that I've kind of been collecting. I'm not going to show them all off in the playthrough, but like definitely take your time exploring this area because there's a lot of items, a lot of TMs to get. What I did want to check though is this plate right here because I thought maybe the symbols are kind of the same as the ones that we found back in Roaring Moon's cave. Looking at them now, they don't look super similar. I mean, I guess they do have some resemblance, but I don't know. You might notice down there though, there is a very familiar looking Pokemon. In fact, it's literally the Pokemon we're riding on right now. That's right. Wait a minute, what is that? Oh, okay. Past Dawn fan. Thought it was something else. But here is the Doppelganger, Goraidon. So right in front of you, we are going to save our game just to make sure we don't end up messing up. And actually, I should lead off with Phoebe because she's got Nuzzle and uh, that'll help us catch it a little easier. Oh, God. Went invisible for a second there, didn't you, buddy? But there he is, the false Cory. Gura! That's right, you get to catch yourself another one of the legendary Pokemon. Wait, why is it facing away from us? What the heck? I don't know what is going on in this episode anymore, man. It seems a little crazy, but this Goraidon is going to be at level 72. A little bit higher than the one the game basically gives you for free. And I definitely recommend using your Master Ball on this one. That would be the easiest way to catch it. I'm sure that Quick Balls probably work pretty good too. You can just toss a Quick Ball if you don't get it, run away, and then uh, you can try again. Well, actually, I'm not sure with Legendary Pokemon if you can run away from them. Should I try it? Oh, the game doesn't even let you escape. O okay, never mind then. Uh, well, I guess we're in it for the Long Haul. So close combat. And uh, we're going to try to weaken it down to red zone HP and then toss some, I don't even know what kind of Pokeballs. I guess timer balls might be kind of like thematically appropriate for it because of course it's like the past paradox. I mean, all paradox Pokemon I feel like fit inside of the timer ball with the whole time motif that they've got going. But yeah, I definitely recommend using your master ball if you're struggling against this thing as I'm pretty sure it's the strongest legendary you can get in this game. You guys know me, I love catching legendaries in Premier Ball, as painful as it can be to just sit there for however many turns it takes to catch him. I don't know why it feels extra special to catch specifically legendary Pokemon in the all-white Pokeball. Something really cool about them putting this second legendary is you can basically trade it with a friend and that way you can both get each of the legendary. So like you can trade this Godidon for your friend's Vididon if they're playing Pokemon Violet. So you don't actually have to play through the game a second time, since obviously you can't breed legendaries in past generations, past Pokemon games. It was always a little bit more difficult to like get the opposite version legendary, but thankfully here, seems the developers thought about that and gave you a second legendary for free. Well, not for free, you gotta actually catch this one, but it's really cool that they put the second one in there, though I guess that has more to do with like the Paradox theme than like them doing it for gameplay purposes but still i appreciate that game freak and we'll definitely be trading this guy for meet i dawn over in violet so we can complete the decks or i guess it would be better to trade the original could i dawn since it's lower level but i'm not really sure if you can trade that one since it's the pokemon you ride around on i don't know if the game would even let you trade it necessarily Honestly, I'm kind of scared that this dude's about to start struggling and hurt itself and die. So I'm going to just throw some timer balls from now on because, yeah, it's only going for flamethrower, which means it probably ran out of PP on collision course and giga impact and bulk up. So I really hope at this point, I mean, I know for sure that it's been more than 10 turns. So the timer ball should have a little bit of a better chance of catching. But as you can see, it's not 
really working out either so far, but maybe I spoke too soon because... Come on, man. Okay, thank goodness. It still has bulk ups. Dude, I'm gonna run out of timer balls at this point. I've literally only got two left, and it's just breaking free on the first try. How have you not run out of PP at this point? I am genuinely surprised as we go down to our final timer ball in this Kodai Don. Yo! Really? After all that and we get a critical capture? Man, I wish I threw down a premier ball instead. But hey, in the end, we got Kodai Don finally. And I'll take the timer ball. It looks pretty cool with the theming of it being Paradox Pokemon, you know, time is of the essence with it. But what I'm really curious about is how this works with the other Koraidon in our party. What happens if we put both Koraidons into our squad? Bro, what? We just have two of them. Cory and Koraidon now. This is a little weird that we can have two of them, but I guess at the same time, it makes sense. Like, there were two Koraidons in the story, so I guess the other difference is you can now have this Koraidon always in battle mode while also riding around on this other one. So it does make sense, actually, why the game ga gives you two from a gameplay perspective, too, not just, like, trading, you know. Because your ride Koraidon has to switch into its ride form, like, every time you press the plus button, that means you'd have to go back into the menu to turn it into battle form, so this way... You can have both Koraidon like in its ride form and the battle form simultaneously so you don't have to keep going back to the menu and transforming. But yeah, I suppose that about wraps up this episode. We got every single Paradox Pokemon down in Area 0, including the king of the past paradoxes, Koraidon. Plus we got two shiny Pokemon, like how insane is that? So I want to thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button if you enjoyed and let me know in the comments below what you think we should take on next, the Gym Leader rematches or the Ruinous Quartet, the new hidden legendary Pokemon in this game. Hope you all have a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, or whatever other holiday you might celebrate, and I will catch you in the next episode.